Thank you very much, and Karen. Um, it's uh, 47 minutes past the hour, and we actually scheduled um, a longer time for this. So actually, what I think we can do before we start, let's say, tallying the votes, I think because all our dragons um, more or less addressed every pitch, I think it would only be fair uh, not to do a Q&A, but rather uh, have each contestant in reverse order, I would like to give you uh, 30 seconds uh, um, related to your pitch. If you, there are any things you would like to clarify or stress that you didn't, you feel you didn't uh, get a chance to. So just as a reminder, the order will be in reverse order. So it'll be Jean, Teresa, Jonathan, Sean, Stephen, Teresa, Nobre, Jamie, and Alan. So with that in mind, um, I would like to start with Jean. If Thank you. Ready. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, Ari made a very good point. I, I called for text-based work, but I didn't specify, I didn't narrow that down. And in particular, I think there are two areas. Uh, one is a preservation instrument, um, which, as Jonathan said, could be done by the, you know, the end of the end of this session. Uh, and the second area is a, a draft text for a, a model law for um, exceptions and limitations, particularly for libraries, archives, and museums to start with. Thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Jean. So uh, thanks for that. Uh, now, Teresa, when you're ready. Yeah, so thanks very much, Dragon, for all your really helpful comments. Um, I just would have a couple of brief responses. Um, so I think my, my proposal was a very practical um, proposal and, and really helps to give information on how, on how the copyright system is working as a whole. Um, and I had questions about how would it relate to the SCCR? Well, I think my proposal would maybe complement um, in many ways the popular proposal that Jamie made at the beginning on transparency, um, because I think it could, and it could be part of a work program on transparency to see how do the, uh, how does the copyright system work? And um, WIPO has actually done work on copyright and competition before. And in a report in 2013, they stated that if markets for authorized authorized uses don't work properly, people will switch from legal to illegal copies. And it has an important um, relation for the democratic development of countries. So I think it is a copyright issue that the committee could address. Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. And now we'll go to Jonathan Bannon. Just to let you know, I've been a bit generous with my 30 seconds, but please try to stick to 30 seconds. Thank you. Well, well thank you, Dragons. Uh, for your uh, your uh, response, I mean, first of all, of course, and he goes without saying that you're all very intelligent and good looking. Um, and I'd also like to add that I, I, I uh, uh, your basic intuition is correct that this my proposal is very pragmatic. It's <laughs> it is um, it is the most likely to actually you know cross the finish line. In our lifetime, and uh, you know that's saying a lot for uh, for the SCCR. Great, Jonathan. Um, Sean, you're next. Okay, great. Let me um, address the one question that I heard, which was from Ari, and let me just verify that my my proposal is not that we take years to negotiate a new declaration, but rather that SCCR agree now to undertake a course of action to act now before the COVID pandemic is over. So we can call it very various things. It could be the copyright on, you know, the declaration on, on copyright and public health emergencies or the declaration on copyright in the digital environment. But my point is that we're not negotiating anything now. And at this SCCR, what the, what the committee should agree to is to work with a timeline, with a deadline of the next SCCR to actually produce a declaration at the next SCCR. And since we're not negotiating anything else, I think we should vote to address that one issue for as long as we're under this pandemic. Thanks. Thank you, Sean. Uh, let me reset the clock. Uh, yes, Stephen, are you ready? So. Th 
thank you, Dragons, for your feedback. And in particular, thank you to, to Eri for describing me as being moving, which has never happened to me before ever. So thank you for that. Um, I just wanted to say uh, in respect to the idea of a, a Marrakesh Treaty for the memory of the world, this would be a complement to the model provision proposed by Jonathan, but it's our opportunity to look to the long term. Next year, we have COP26, and we have a real opportunity to show that WIPO, how SCCR, can make a real contribution to adaptation efforts. I also obviously want to support the opinions expressed by the Dragons as uh, concerning the other proposals. I believe in particular that a focus on transparency as proposed by Jamie would help before we make recommendations on subjects such as public lending rights in order to understand the situation for authors, which obviously remains a priority for all of us. Thank you. Your mic is off. Uh, please. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, thanks. Um, Teresa, do you want to go ahead? Thank you. So, um, just to clarify, uh, what I propose is um, a mandatory instrument that sets a rule to decide which national education exception applies. So, this, this instrument, which is a treaty, uh, doesn't mandate exceptions, just as a rule to decide on cross border use. And, and this can be attached to the country where the educational establishment is located or where the communication originates, we can decide. Uh, and the condition, and this is to address concerns by global North countries, uh, is that the applicable exception, of course, must be consistent with the treaties and the, with the three-step tests to avoid foreign shopping uh, for exceptions that are not uh, treaty compliant. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Um, Jamie, um, would you like to respond? Um, th thank you. As, as transparency relates to the digital agenda, I, I think that's, that's correct. There's a, a, a very strong relationship. I think the weakness of the di digital agenda right now is that it's about everything. And so when people segue to the digital agenda, uh, you know, they, they're not really quite sure where to start. And so in some ways it's so broad uh, it, it, it's 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 hard to see what there's you know what the real mandate is there. I think that transparency is a little different frame. I, it's one thing I would say in favor of transparency. I, I just think people underestimate how important it is to establish in terms of good government and good governance globally that we put more emphasis on facts and evidence, and that we just be better informed about things. There's huge asymmetries between what's actually going on and what people think is going on. And there's a lot of areas where they're just, just black holes where people don't even really know. Nobody seems to know what's going on in some areas. And so it's sort of, you know, we're floundering around making policies without knowing very much. I think that the good thing about the transparency thing is that it, 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 it can go to everyone's issue in all the different areas. It's sort of a cross, a cross cutting issue. I, I think the focus should be initially the goal of identifying areas where transparency is most needed. And, and secondly, the practical measures that can increase transparency. So there should be a normative frame in the sense, the goal should be to have more transparency. And that's sort of basically something that people should be able to agree at, at that level. And finally, in terms of Luis's uh, comment, uh, I think it should also include ways of ensuring that the normative process itself is, is transparent. There were some gains made in the last eight years or 10 years on that thing. And then there was some sliding back on that. So I think that that's also important. Thank you. Thank you, JV. And uh, last but not least, uh, Alan, please. Uh... Yes, a very brief comment. Uh, uh, one comment that really highlighted is that lack of resistance to the inclusion of people with disabilities since it's already being approved it went all through the process and although there is uh it's probably the easiest issue well it's the least resistant issue within as as ccr it seems to be abandoned it seems to be just left on itself as if we had completed the job of including people with disability we have not and not only that but i do think that if we when we push for that we actually are pushing for more limitations we're actually getting a stronger hold on the importance of limitation within the whole system. Uh, all the other issues are very important, but they do bring resistance on their own. And I do believe that pushing forward 
with the easiest issues will actually strengthen the, the ones that, are, that face more resistance. That's all.